Life goes faster or routine. With this thought, I'm Monica Rajput. Welcome you all in today's presentation. The title of my uh, presentation is De Novo Protein Design by Deep Network Hallucination. This article was published uh, in Na uh, Nature on 1 December 21 and the uh, under the Evan Heavenshans et al. and their team. My first slide for deep learning. Deep learning is a type of machine learning and artificial intelligence AI that initiate the way human gain certain type of knowledge. If we talk about the definition and the way of conceptual, deep learning is a computer program that can uh, identify what is going to be something. If we go for a technical definition, deep learning is a class of machine learning algorithm in the form of neural network that uses cascades of layers, tires, of processing units to extract features from data and make predictive guesses about new data. It is extremely beneficial to data scientists who are tasked with collecting, analyzing, interpreting a large amount of data. Deep learning make the process faster and easier. In this picture, you shown that the neurons, the nucleotide amino acid building rate. This figure represents the our genome versus deep learning. How we can show our neurons uh, deep learning in the form of genome. If we talk about uh, deep learning in the form of biological, then the second figure tells us about the what kind of data uh, we you, we consider in deep learning. The data can be sequence based. It includes protein or DNA sequence. Matrix data that comprises of gene expression, network data that comprises of molecular networks. These are all the, the data comes under heterogeneous data. Deep learning, as we know that the system is dumb, that is mechanical, learns with big data that requires a lot of inputs as example, and trial and error guesses to adjust weight and bias to establish key features. It creates a predictive system to identify a new example. Uh, it, it can also be talked in the same way as we talk in AI argument. Big enough data is what makes a difference. Simple algorithm runs a over a large number of data sets. Deep learning is inspired by physics. Semoid functions suggest as a model of neurons for static mechanism behavior. Hop fight field neuron network. Content addressable memory system and binary threshold nodes converts to a local minimal, restricted to Boltzmann mechanism. Study in the theoretical physics condensed matter of field theory, statical mechanism concept, renormalization, Boltzmann distributions, free energy, gives sampling. Now, question arises why it is called deep learning. Deep means hidden layer, cascading tires of processing. Deep networks may be three or more layers versus shallow one or two layers. Learning means algorithm. Learn from data by modeling features and updating probability weight assigned to features node in testing how relevant specific features are in determining the general type of item. Now, my second slide comprises of clustering. Clustering is a fundamental unsupervised learning task commonly applied in exploratory data mining, images, analyze, analysis, information of retrieval, data comprises, pattern recognition, and in bioinformatics. Its primary goal is to grouping of data into clusters based on similarity, density, intervals, or particularly statical distributions, measures of data space. What is a uh, cluster analysis? Uh, a cluster analysis is a grouping is based on distance that is proximity. In clustering analysis, you do not know uh, who or what belongs to which group, not even the number of groups. Data reduction. A researcher may be faced with large number of observation that can be meaningless unless classified into manageable group. Clustering analysis can perform this data reduction procedure objectively by reducing the information from the entire population of samples to the information about specific group. 
आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरोन नेटवर्क न्यूरोन नेटवर्क आर मॉडल्स दैट अटेम्प मिमिक्स सम ऑफ द बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोसेसिंग मैथड found in brain or we can say that it is a collection of uh, um, interconnected neurons that incrementally learns from their environment that is data to capture essential linear or non linear trends in a computer data uh, uh, our neurons are the basic unit in neuron network and uh, artificial neural network resembles uh, our brain in two respect that is first knowledge is acquired by the network through the learning process second interconnection strength between the neurons known as synaptic weight are used to store knowledge there are applications uh, based on biology um, with the help of artificial network networking we can predict the protein structure we can predict the pro secondary protein structure we can predict the gene expression we can predict the gene variants effects also if we talk about uh, the examples of uh, uh, deep learning ai machine learning in our daily life it can be used as we use or we all use the google we we all use the google and you see that you try typing text mind try, try to search something then it automatically show the result and hence we copy paste that uh, or we can say that it's found uh, can be used in uh, phase mining phase detector uh, detection mining uh, in police stations or uh, in our in our research work if we talk about bio in bioinformatics the all the structures we are working on the protein structures that are uh, depends on the deep learning machine learning my next slide title protein structure prediction the prediction of inter residue context and distance from the co evolutionary data using the deep learning has considerably advanced protein structure prediction protein structure prediction by using bioinformatics can involve sequence similarity search msa that is multiple sequence alignment identification and characterization of domains secondary structure prediction automated fold recognition recognition constructing 3d models etc as we know that uh, the protein structures are more highly conserved than the sequence during the evolution the structures comprises is very useful and is establishing distance distant evolutionary relationship undetectable by sequence based method mechanism by which protein structure evolve insertions and deletions of residues shifts in the orientation of secondary structures there are um, methods uh, for doing protein structure prediction it can be a experimental method or a computational method as shown in the figure if we talk about experimental method for protein structure determination it comprises of x-ray crystallography nmr and electron microscopy x-ray in x-ray crystallography uh it is more accurate in vitro need crystal and time consuming and expensive uh, uh for nmr uh, it is fairly accurate in vivo no need of for crystals limited to very small proteins time consuming and hardly if we talk about the uh, difference between x ray and nmr uh, uh x ray is a, a better option for uh, protein structure prediction as compared to nmr uh in x-ray crystallography and nmr experiments will show a dense set of proteins such that all the proteins are within homology mod modeling range of one or more known experimental structure now the second method comprises of computational method major techniques are template modeling and template free modeling in template modeling there are homological modeling homology modeling also known as comparative modeling second one is threading both these methods are uh, are use known protein structure in template free modeling abinito modeling also known as de novo protein prediction prediction uh, it based on physics and knowledge base 
in this modeling we do not know the protein structure what is abonito modeling prediction of 3d structure of a protein from its amino acid or prediction that is the prediction of its tertiary structure from its primary structure template free modeling without the use of known structure based on the thermodynamics hypothesis that is the native structures of a protein is one of which a free energy achieve global minimization and pinson theory factors responsible for abonito that required for abonito modeling accurate energy function physics based energy functions or knowledge based energy function conformational search molecular dynamics selection of native like model why do we need to predict the structure to compare the structure homologous mutants or with or without mutants for drug discovery to know about the function of a protein or gene explaining the phenotype of existing mutation there is a flow chart for abonito modeling we required a sequence then we predict the secondary structure this the secondary structure comprises of alpha helix beta sheets loops etc tertiary structure then energy minimization is done so that we got the structure that has low energy then validation through mean field potential and we can predict our structure the nevo protein design explore the full sequence space guided by physical principle that underline the protein folding computational method has advanced to the point that a wide range of structures can be designed from the scratch with the atomic level accuracy hence in this paper the rosetta tool was used for uh, 3d nevo protein designing the workflow shown in the figure the rosetta is a web server for the 3d protein structure prediction or we can say that is a minimum threading method in this in the software uh, first of all we break down the query sequence into many short segments maybe 3 to 9 then we predict the secondary structures of small segment using hamster segments with assigned secondary structures are subsequently assembled into the 3d configuration random combination of fragments a large number of models are built and their overall energy potential will calculated conformation with lowest free energy is chosen as the best model inputs we give our amino acid as a sequence in low resolution modeling also known as centroid molding the reduces the atom representation make it in a simplified energy function clustering also known uh, as a graphical representation that collects homologs create a row low resolution models as clusters thread query sequence onto model and proceed to full refinement high resolution refinement uh, also known as full atom representation a detailed energy function refinements and minimization evaluating optimizing specific atom atom interaction for example hydrogen bonding there are some methods methods and some information about the data the protein structure that are developed during this process who were assigned and submitted in the protein data bank with a session number given in as follows nmr structures were also deposited in the biomag res database and the protein that are used in these were uh, brought taken from the unipod the codes that were used during during this process were also available in tr design kit work package during the software run of rosetta the objectives are to initiate investigate whether the information captured by such network is sufficient rich to generate new whole protein with sequence unrelated to those of natural occurring proteins using in training the models to generate random amino acids 
sequences and input them into a TR Rosetta structure prediction network to predict starting residues, residue distance map. Similarities and dissimilarities among the sets of structures generated during the distance geometry and consistent with the distance information obtained in NMR spectroscopy. Carry out Monte Carlo sampling in amino acid sequence space to determine the 3D structures of three of the hallucinated proteins, two by X-ray crystallography, one by NMR, and these are closely matched the hallucinated models. The result. The first figure, uh, overview of protein hallucination. In this, uh, the first figure tell us about the structure prediction method such as TR Rosetta and alpha 2 fold employ a deep neural network to predict inter-residual geometries from the single sequence or a multiple sequence alignment. And the 3D structure is constructed by constraint minimization. Figure two represent network production for randomly sequence are not confident, confined blurry 2D images. Here, a multiple amino acid substitution into sequence using Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm, optimizing the sharpness of 2D maps. Monte Carlo algorithm is widely used in protein structure calculation. It helps us to explore conformation efficiently. It helps us to, to search for minimum of complicated function. This is the method make use of random number of solution problems for which it is difficult to calculate the answer exactly. The third is the systematic of MCMC procedure. Indeed, aligning the graph is showing that the aligning trajectory, the average over 2000 runs shows a monotonic increase in the pullback labor divergence with increasing Monte Carlo optimization. Here, the second E figure shows about the distance map. Distance plot are the 2D matrix used to visualize the distance between the residues in a protein structure and can be shaded according to their separation. Distance map become progressively sharper along the Monte Carlo trajectories as exemplified by five hallucinated sequence with different protein structures topology. The F and the G shows the hallucinated sequence and hallucinated structures respectively, unrelated to the nature occurring the protein sequence. And the database is used in UNICEF REF 19 with BLAST E value 0 0.17. Whereas in hallucinated structure, range in, range in similarity to protein structure, the PDB with average TM score is 0 0.78. The second figure in the result comprises of overview of computational result. The hallucinated sequence and the associated structures are quite diverse and different Monte Carlo trajectories starting from the different random seeds coverage on different sequence structures. Here, they generate a 2D map and space spanned by the structures. These structures are spanned alpha and all betas and mixed alpha beta bond classes with 95 different subfold at a TM score clustering the threshold of 0 0.75. These are the representative example of structures of the 27 prominent clusters as shown. Here, the first space figure showing about the sequence space, multi-dimensional uh, scaling generate representation of sequence space over the over by two hallucinated protein. Blast bit core was used as a scoring point. And the second figure uh, talks about the multi-dimensional scaling represent the structural space. The dark color reason that there are uh, circulated by dotted circle. Each gray dot to represent R1 design color code by score from the network. Darker gray color responds to the higher score. 129 experiment tested designs belongs to 27 structure clusters indicate the colored number. 
next figure uh, is comprises of examples of hallucinated designs of various topology the first column represent a ribbon protection in which the blue color represent the end terminus and the yellow color represent the yellow terminus the second column represent the hydrophobic core as we know that uh, in protein structure the protein core is hydrophobic and the surface is hydrophilic third column distance map at the beginning and the end of the hallucinated trajectory same as i discussed before the fourth column represent folding energy landscape from the large scale rosetta abinito structure prediction calculation fifth column points represent lowest energy structures samples are starting from the extended chain the gray point and the starting from the hallucinated design model green points the energy landscape funnel into the energy minimum corresponding to the designed structure providing independent alibite in silico evidence that hallucinated sequence encode the hallucinated structure the fifth figure from the paper i chose as a result to present as a result title structural analysis of network hallucinated protein in this the hallucinated model <coughs> sorry left represent the hallucinated model and the right model represent the nmr ensemble structure and the design as designed uh, this uh, nmr structure is also uh, published in the database with the uh, session number 0515 second we represent the super imposition super imposition of nmr resembles the resembles nmr ensembles transparent gray and hallucinated model outline blue of the designed 0515 and overlay the meloid structures and models with the side chain if we talk about what is superimposition superimposition comprises of a high modeling uh, in this we know in advance that the correspond between the points of secondary structures we want to align uh, in superimposition uh, it is a simple technique in which we trace the backbone or the co corner of that protein and then we try to identify the axis then translate the secondary structure so that their centers may overlap in the last one then rotate the secondary structure so that the average distance get minimized the second structure represented the hallucinated model 0217 and the crystal structure superimposition again is done on the hallucinated model that is shown in a blue color and gray color shown by a design 0217 standard structure in a and c are colored from n terminus blue and c represent red in followed the figure e if we zoom out the picture of crystal structure that shown in gray color and hazulate in blue as shown as thick in side if f represent the hazulate hallucinated models of design and shown in the left and crystal structure of structure modified shown in the right and hence superimposition of both the structures were done that is the hallucinated model and the crystal structure superimposition of n terminals section left and of c terminal section right of these both the models that is hallucinated and the crystal structure gray model the figure 3 comprises of uh, experimental characterization of alpha helix neuron network hallucination uh, the first figure tell us about the dendron showing 42 uh, all the helix design cluster in a structure similarity on the basis of tm score the most stable designs with series spectra consisted with large structures are labeled in their ids then the three then the second column represent the uh, 3d dimensional models of hallucinated design second th uh, third column represent the abinito folding funnels from rosetta the d sec mla space of purified protein and the third is circular dichrome spectra at 25 degrees celsius blue and 95 degrees celsius in red conclusion 
The result of this study demonstrate that the deep neural network trained exclusively or natively sequence and the structures can generalize to create a new protein with sequences unrelated to those of native protein that folds into stable structures. Many of the hallucinated proteins that they found are monomeric, stable, have the expected secondary structures and are strongly predicted to fold to the target structure by Rosetta in completely orthogonal calculation. The close agreement, agreement between the experimental solution, NMR, and the crystal structure with a corresponding hallucinated design models for the three proteins that they characterize in different in details suggest details suggest that they may that many of these proteins fold into the prediction predicted hallucinated structure. The hallucinated structure shown a remarkable resemblance to these idealized protein in regularity of secondary structure, shorten of the loop, and other characterization. The most similar structures in PDB to, to the 0.0738 mode structure is the de novo protein structure. During the training of large numbers of irregular native protein structures, the deep neural network evidently alone to encode either protein structures properties very similar to those encoded by expert protein designers using more traditional specific approaches, albeit representing them in a very different way. The TR Rosetta model is inherently low in resolution as side chain of atoms and packing interactions are not represented explicitly. This could limit the depth of the native free energy minimization and hence the occupancy of the design states compared with the alternative possible aggregation prone state. Thus, deep neuron network trained to predict native protein structures from their sequence can be inverted to design a new protein. And such network and method should, could, should contribute alongside traditional physics-based models to the de novo design of protein with new functions. More generally, this work demonstrates the power of generative deep learning approaches for molecular design, which will undoubtedly continue to grow over the year. These are the references. Thank you. No, thank you, Monica. Do we have thank questions? You, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, do three, no. Sir, uh, like in the beginning, there was a term called clustering analysis. So, can that yeah. be explained? What is Monica, clustering? You? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay. The clustering here means uh, the fundamental. Uns actually, uh, we if we talk about deep learning, the, it is uh, it is fall under the category of unsupervised learning task. Here, yeah? the clustering mm -hmm. is a fundamental super unsupervised learning task commonly applied in evolution uh, exploratory data mining. Uh, if I explain you in a layman term, agar hamare paas bahut sara data hai, if it if if we take an example of a class a school. और हमारे पास बहुत सारा डाटा है कि मैथ्स में स्टूडेंट्स के इतने मार्क्स हैं ये तो मैं बता रही हूं आपको कि मैथ्स इंग्लिश अगर हमारे पास डाटा है सारा मार्क्स स्टूडेंट्स का और उसको हमको कम करना है मतलब उसको और सिग्निफिकेंट लेकर आना है तो हम अपने डाटा को ग्रुप्स में कन्वर्ट कर लेंगे ओके ग्रुप्स में क्लस्टरिंग मींस ग्रुपिंग अ ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ताकि हम उसको और कंप्राइजेस करके ताकि उसको और सिग्निफिकेंट डाटा में कन्वर्ट कर सकें ओके Can you uh, talk about types of uh, clusterings? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, clustering, we have a hierarchical clustering. Um, yeah. And then we have, in hierarchical, we can talk about dendrograms. Uh, then, um, hierarchical dendrograms. Yeah, you can have k-mean. Yes, sir. K-mean. Yes, sir. K-mean. Yes. So basically, yes, uh, how do you how do you uh, in the testing methods how do you define the distance between uh, 
two clusters. How can I define a? Uh... Yeah. Because because it all depends upon the distance between the clusters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's grouping based on the distance proximity. Yes, sir. So so what is that distance known as? And how do you decide that uh, what is the threshold distance that you want when you are doing a clustering analysis? Uh, it is not directly related to it, but then if you can tell, it is. Mm. Mm. Okay. I don't know, sir, about that. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, cluster com cluster analysis usually comes in the uh, data reduction methods. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, it basically. Sir, we can do degree on degree basis. Degree ke basis pe kar sakte hai, or uh, degree. Hai. Yes, a degree hai between a centrality centrality hai. Huh. Or. And, uh, and then uh, 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 between a centrality coefficient coefficient value. Uh, hum log usme dekhte hai. Kaun sa coefficient? Uh, uh, degree, 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 between a centrality centrality. See. I just asked because uh, we are probably going to have uh, a statistician teach us uh, the clustering methods. Sorry, sir. I'm not getting that. It's okay. So, uh, probably that is something uh, we have uh, statistics programs. Uh, statistics uh, lecture scheduled and uh, I'll have this uh, basically uh, ask the statistician to do this but I don't know how much they will be able to talk about cluster analysis I'll try to find somebody who can do it okay sir okay yes sir Sir, so another question I had. Yeah. That is, sir, like if I have a particular question in my mind regarding this entire process, so sir, how do I proceed? Like a basic flow line of how this entire study should go on. Just I wanted to get a brief and a clear idea, the simple flow chart, how will this process go on, like from my question to my solution. Uh, what is your question that will decide upon how will you proceed? Basically, okay, uh, basically, the purpose of discussing this article was yes, sir. that uh, now if you look at the targeted therapies which are coming up, yes. where you are talking about in individual precision medicine, yes. you basically are targeting proteins. And to target the proteins, you have to know the protein structures, you have to know the protein-protein interactions. Yes. And sometimes if there is the, uh, if you want to block a protein by another protein. Yes. Then you have to design that protein. Yeah. So basically, this particular article is talking about reverse engineering of a protein. It is talking about what is called as a hallucinated protein. Uh, you put in a random amino acid sequence and your software comes out with a protein which will fit and bind to uh, or correspond to the protein that you already have in structure. Okay. okay. So this is, this is the basic purpose. So oh, uh, as you said, <clears throat> it depends upon how you want to use the neural networks. There yes. are many ways you can use the neural networks. So whenever you have a large data, you want to use a neural networks. See, commonly used uh, use of neural network is, she said, text mining. That is one use of neural network, like 
uh, Google does. You put in any text string and it searches for it. Wherever it finds it, it displays. Voice recognition. If you have an Apple phone, face recognition. So these are all based on artificial neural networks, wherein, wherein the uh, software is trained to look for certain features, match them with other features, and only when they be and only when they match, it gives you an output. So larger the data set, better the output. But larger the training set means larger background material that you have, better is the outcome. Okay. So, so basically, uh, how you train your software to give you an output. And if you use a limited set of data, it gives a limited output, uh, which may not be very useful for you. But if you have a unlimited set of database or a large database, then it gives a better output. Okay. And uh, basically, these machine learnings are nothing, but these are algorithms which run on computer, computational algorithms. Right, sir. Mm. So, so basically, uh, suppose you want to look for, uh, you have a photograph, you want to find out whose photograph it is. So the moment you open your Google Lens and ask Google Lens to find it, what it does, start looking at uh, the billions of photographs which are available over the internet. So what are the sites that it goes and search? It searches the social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, where people put their posts, their photos. It goes to uh, other uh, sites like newspapers, blogs, and tries to search for those photos wherever the photos are classified. Yes. Right. But okay. it doesn't go to, it doesn't go to, uh, some of the software where your photo is definitely going to be there. Like, where do you think your photograph is going to be present? Suppose if I have to look for your photograph and I want to find out whose photograph it is, do you know a database where your photograph will be available? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, Aadhaar. Aadhaar. Your driving license. Facebook. Yes, of Facebook. Voter ID. Yeah. Your voter ID. So yes. there are there are number of places where your uh, photograph is going to be listed. So if I have to use a face recognition for say detection of a crime or uh, going in and finding out uh, a criminal, all I need is an access to a database which has photograph of all the people in the universe. The software goes, matches, comes out with possibilities. Yes, and identifies the people. So the same thing we are doing with uh, with science here. We we have we have advanced a lot in voice recognition, photograph, uh, picture recognition, figure rec recognition. Uh, but we have not been able to reproduce uh, the same as far as the medicine is concerned. We have done a lot in uh, protein folding, protein unfolding, uh, protein targeting. Basically, what happens is like whenever you have a protein, every protein has a target. Right, sir. Right? Yes. So every protein has a target, but then it also has off targets. That means other than that target, it can bind to some other places, some other off targets. And then this also has uh, something called as toxic effects. So what you can do is without actually giving that protein or making that protein, you can simulate that if my protein looks like this, where is it going to bind to this protein? Which other protein structures it is going to bind? And what biological effects those binding or those interaction of the protein will produce? Hello. So, yes, sir. Yeah. So basically, you can do a whole set of experiment without actually designing a protein. Okay. And yes, sir. once you once you have uh, 10, 15 different um, say, a random chain of amino acids, or if you are 
software gives you an output that this is the best match protein for this, then you can go ahead, synthesize and run the experiment. Rather okay. than having the protein and running the experiment and then failing. Yes. Yes, sir. So, so basically, all these uh, neural network helps us with what we call as reverse engineering. Right, yeah. sir. So we are not going forward, we are going backwards. Backward. Backward, yes. Okay. So whenever we require to go backwards, we use uh, all this. Though we appear to be going forward, but actually we are going backward. Right, yeah. sir. Okay. I know this is very confusing and uh, yes, sir, are, quite a large a of, topic. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of lot of uh, things which uh, have not been covered earlier because we have directly jumped to. Uh, we have taken an article which basically talks about halogenated proteins. Yes. Sir. Uh, yes. And sir. Uh, it is it is something which is a very novel concept that is coming up now. Yeah. So right, that is why it has been uh, taken up without actually covering the basic aspects of it. Plus, you people come from different backgrounds. Yes, so sir. That that's is also the that is also mm -hmm. one of the problems that uh, you find things different to understand, difficult to understand. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, uh, Monica, you must remember that uh, it is the Euclidean distance on which the hierarchical models or the uh, your endograms are based on. Okay, sir. It's called Euclidean distance. Okay. That is the basic measure for all uh, the okay. clusterings, whether it is a tree clustering or a hierarchical clustering or a two base cluster, a two model clustering or a four model clustering or whatever you want there are many many kind of uh, clusterings uh, available right so okay yes sir and uh, there is another one which is called as a nearest neighbor method yes sir this is used a lot in medicine and here also you define that what do you call as near so uh, you define the distance that if they are this close I am going to call them near neighbor okay this near neighbor method is used in uh, what we call as propensity score matching analysis this is basically done uh, when we want, uh, we have two set of data and we want the two set of data to be nearly identical with no differences. Okay, sir. So we match one set with the other set, find the differences and then reduce the differences by bringing in the nearest uh, neighbor. Okay, sir. Manjusha, you have any questions? I guess she is not there. She Hello. logged in. Lele. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Any questions, Hello. Manjusha? Uh, no, yes, sir. Monitor, it. can you please speak? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're listening. Yeah, uh, Monica, can you please explain template based method or to identify the protein predictions? Okay, sure. Template-based method comprises of homological modeling or, or we can say that comparative modeling. And the second false sentence in this category is fold recognition. In homological modeling, we also we already know our protein structure. Uh, it works uh, on the basis of remote homologous, uh, about for 30% of uh, pairwise identity based on the sequence similarity uh, with a protein for which a structure has been solved. Uh, if we want to do a homology modeling, then we require a template section, a selection uh, that goes for a search for a black homologous sequences, and we can done it with through the tool called BLAST. Then we go for a sequence alignment. Sequence alignment, that is the multiple sequence alignment MSA. Uh, the software can be used 
maybe tea coffee or para line then give, go for modeling building then here in modeling building it goes for in two ways we can model our backbone or we can go for loop modeling then we go for a side chain refinement after the side chain refinement we go for a modeling refinement using energy functions and in this we can use a software uh, maybe shadow gromos g r o m o s and then finally a model evolution was done it is a simple method in which uh, we can predict our protein structure you can go for a database uh, pdb protein uh, data bank where you can uh, um, uh, uploaded your structure for this first of all you have to download your sequence from your fasta file in the fasta format where you have to select the sequence that must be start with m that is methionine and you had you 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 have to avoid the isomeric form of sequence after selecting the sequence you can use a, a simple tool you can use autodoc or a chimera go for a chimera then just upload your file and then you can make your structures you can view your structure in a easy way as if you are not aware of bio function tool but chimera if you go for a chimera you can easily understand how protein structure is formed you can you can view the alpha helix you can view your ligand you can view your uh, you can do your superimposition as i discussed in the paper etc the second if we talk about a second method that is uh, threading or fold recognition it requires a structure similar to the known structure uh in the structure um we predict the structure fold for unknown protein sequence um by fitting in the sequence into a structural database and selecting for the best fitting fold uh it is based on two algorithm that is uh, pair wise energy method threading and profile based method fold recognition the pair wise method for uh, doing we can use our msa here we have to align our sequence and then uh, see the uh, identity of our sequence ki on which positions are amino acids match with the other sequence in threading uh, we search for a structural fold uh, based database uh, to find the best matching structural fold using energy based criteria um it uh, in this we calculate the energy for a raw model if we found the lowest energy fold then correspond to the structure a group of most compatible fold uh in fold recognition a profile is constructed uh, for a related protein structure and then we generate a superimposition of structures to explore the corresponding residues the secondary structures ka uh, jo hum type dekh sakte hain wo hum usme identify kar sakte hain maybe polarity hydrophobicity etc ओके मोनिका अभी आपने बोला कि सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर्स में जैसे सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर्स आर कंप्राइजेस ऑफ हाँ हेलो हेलो आप देख सकते हो उसके अल्फा हाँ हाँ बोलिए अल्फा स्ट्रक्चर बीटा सीड्स को फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं बट अगर हमें जैसे कोई प्रोटीन है तो उसके रामाचंद्रन प्लॉट को हमें डिजाइन करना है तो फिर हाँ तो फिर हम क्या टेम्पलेट बेस मेथड के अकॉर्डिंगली जैसे अभी हाँ 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 फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अगर कोई स्ट्रक्चर बन जाता है तो उसको हमको बताने के लिए कि स्ट्रक्चर जो हम बनाए वो कितना एक्यूरेट है दे आर आर मेनी फैक्टर्स रिलेटेड फॉर दैट फॉर एग्जांपल वी टॉक अबाउट बी फैक्टर ऑक्यूपेंसी और क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर आर फैक्टर या फिर उसके कोऑर्डिनेट्स क्या हैं अगर हम बी फैक्टर्स की बात करते हैं वो टेम्परेचर बेस्ड फैक्टर्स होता है क्योंकि जो हमारा प्रोटीन जो मॉडल हम बनाते हैं अगर वो मोशन है मोशन में है तो वो टेम्परेचर के डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल है ऑक्यूपेंसी में हम लोग चेक करते हैं कि नंबर ऑफ आइटम्स आर विजिबल इन स्ट्रक्चर्स उनकी प्रोबेबिलिटी क्या है एंड देन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट रिजोल्यूशन कि रिलेटेड टू द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन सेट ऑफ इक्विवेलेंट जो प्लेन्स ऑफ पैटर्न्स में है और जो हमारा सेल यूनिट सेल है वो कितना अफेक्ट कर रहा है ऑन द डिफ्रैक्शन कलेक्टेड डिफ्रैक्शन डाटा आर फैक्टर्स मतलब आर फैक्टर में हम लोग क्रिस्टोग्राफी मॉडल को अपनी ओरिजिनल एक्सरे मॉडल से कंपेयर करते हैं 
और हम अगर बात करें रामाचंदन प्लॉट की तो इसमें हम लोग स्टडी करते हैं मतलब रामाचंद्र प्लॉट इज यूज टू यूज टू आप जाएंगे यूज करेंगे अपने प्रोटीन का वहाँ पे आपको ऑप्शन मिलेगा आप अपने अपने प्रोटीन में आपके प्रोटीन के सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर में कौन कौन से सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर जो है अल्फा बीटा हेलिक्स अल्फा बीटा बीटा अल्फा हेलिक लूप वो सब आप रामचंद्रन प्लॉट को ड्रॉ करेंगे और आप आप देख सकते हैं कि आपके कौन से लेफ्ट हैंड हेलिक्स में जा रहा है या राइट हैंड हेलिक्स में जा रहा है या बीटा शीट में जा रहा है वो आप वहां पे सब देख सकते हो जाके ओके थैंक यू मोनिका वेलकम दी ओके मोनिका सो हाउ इज योर प्रोटीन प्रोटीन इंटरक्शंस दैट यू डू इन बायो इनफॉर्मेटिक्स डिफर्स फ्रॉम कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ हेलोसिनेटेड प्रोटीन्स sir if uh, i'm if i want to do a protein protein interaction then uh, uh, then i can go for a uh, uh, tools like a network analyst or veggie salt where i can input our uh, protein our uh, our desired dags daps and then we i choose for the software i want to do because in bioinformatics there are other software based on uh, manually created or automated then if i go for a protein protein interaction want to see i go for a string and decide our score on on the basis and then i'll make then uh, and uh, then that software search for other in protein interaction that are already submitted in that software and then it form give me a protein protein interaction it can be a through text mining it can be a physical inter based interaction it can be a genetic it can be a co evolutionary etc right so uh, when you are doing a protein protein interaction uh, normal protein protein interaction in a bioinformatics it is yes, a known sir. protein against a known protein yes so sir yes sir it will be known proteins and yes, the interaction sir. has to be known yes so sir so if the interaction is not known then you are not able to do it with a ppi right sir so then but for that you have to uh, use the deep machine learning Yes, sir. So For, that is the question uh, of Dhotrina. That that is where the deep machine learning comes into play. Yes, sir. So deep machine learning is usually used uh, for knowing yes, the unknown uh, protein functions or unknown protein interactions. Okay. सर अगर जो हमारा प्रोटीन प्रोटीन इंट्रैक्शन आता है जो ऑलरेडी पेपर में पब्लिश नहीं है बट वो टेक्स्ट माइनिंग के थ्रू आता है तो वो हम डीप लर्निंग में बोल सकते हैं उसको जैसे अगर टेक्स माइनिंग है ऑलरेडी पेपर में पब्लिश नहीं है बट वो स्टैटिकल स्कोर के बेसिस पे वो प्रिडिक्शन बता रहा है कि इन इस प्रोटीन का इस प्रोटीन के साथ इंट्रैक्शन हो सकता है सी वो डीप लर्निंग है शैलो लर्निंग है दैट विल डिपेंड अपॉन हाउ मेनी लेयर्स इट गोस थ्रू ओके एंड हाउ मेनी हाउ मेनी आइटरेशंस एक्चुअली टेक प्लेस ओके सर सो इट बेसिकली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नंबर ऑफ आइटरेशंस दैट हैपेंस एंड basically uh, what methods do you use uh, like like you said markov's chain in markov's chain uh, if you are, if you are going to use uh, then uh, it basically depends upon uh, markov's Direct chain random search yes yeah or, or monte carlo methods if you are using then basically it will depend upon uh, bootstrapping replacing one with a known with another yes, one sir. and then see another what happens one. right see sir. what happens so there are multiple iterations which are which is uses and uh, uh, like the basic purpose of this is to because it's a big data set right, it is sir. very difficult to manually uh, analyze it it's not something like a 30 patient sample size uh, study right sir so and these are complex data so you need tools to uh, actually uh, decipher them for you because they go through a huge data bank to uh, do the computations plus the second thing is that you need to be fast here 
right sir so so that is another thing that you need to be fast so the computational uh, helps you to be fast if you manually start doing it then it will going to take months and years to uh, find a protein structure that is similar, similar or to, probably yes sir time consuming hai hamara and then right sir expensive so, bhi nahi hai aapko bas software run karna hai aur aapko soft, idea mil jayega there are a lot of free softwares available yes sir free softwares hai aapko bas there are a lot of free software available which you can run which yes, you can sir. run or you can define your own algorithm and then build on your own software you yes, can sir. also do that right because sir. because there are number of softwares which let you build your own program and run it right sir so you can do that also in them Right, sir. And there are paid softwares also where who charges a huge sum of fee for doing it. Right, sir. Like the IBM neural networking is uh, a paid neural networking. Okay. So it has a lot of neural networking and a lot of functions nowadays, and uh, the functions in biology are just coming up. because uh, now we are generating a lot of uh, large data by yes sir uh, experiments like sequencing experiments like microarray right sir uh, then protein sequencing the yes sir dna sequencing transcriptomes metabolomics so yes, sir. now because we are produce proteomics when you are doing a lot of uh, this kind of data generation you have to actually Uh, do the computational faster and identify that what you actually are uh, dealing with. Right, sir. So, sir, this entire study uh, is it like uh, based on a simulation thing? It's based like on simulation. Sim- yes, it is based on simulation. Okay. That, that is we are why, predicting is what the, can be the nearest yeah, result. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is all simulation. Okay. and uh, that is uh, one of the reasons that i asked her to present that uh, we need to know uh, yes that uh, there are methods available in the universe which you can use uh, for your data analysis and data predictions right so yes like in microbiology the bacterial identification and the yes, uh, fungal identification uh, dotrina is being done yes. with multi top nowadays yes so it is again protein based identification so metabolomics based identification right so there are many there database are, there are many data for bacteria, bacteria. database mm-hmm. bacteria fungus you can go through a, Uh, that software and you found out the, that genome and the research that published on that but all the type of bacteria are published there so uh, as you proceed in your uh, phd dotrina you are going to use uh, yeah. some of these such softwares because your okay. uh, identifications of uh, microbiome yeah uh, microbiomes will, yes sir will depend upon a lot on bioinformatics okay otherwise otherwise manually you will not be able to identify yeah. them for a long right, too so long process and so so many process. bacterial species like too so many bacterial microbiome biome pe bhi bahut zyada research ho raha hai bioinformatics mein bhi mm-hmm. yeah bahut yeah. hot topic hai dotrina is doing microbiome okay so when yes. her data comes when her data comes yeah microbiome so when her yeah. data comes uh, she would require to identify the species and make correlations protein interactions uh, yeah. alterations of biological functions and all that is going to require uh, use of softwares and neural networking okay. neural networking okay so some of the things may be available some of the things which are not available you have to write a program and run it yes okay, okay. uh thank you monica once again uh thank it you, was sir. a difficult topic it was a very difficult topic and uh now i know that i have to cover all the statistical aspects uh, one by one yes sir like if we come to know from the basics then it will be more easier to yeah, like follow next, what all they are doing yeah we are starting the next week works. next week is uh, the first of the basic stat thing 
okay because so. because i have asked her uh, neshu to do the basic stat first okay before we proceed to uh, modeling data reduction yeah. uh, etc etc because because you need to learn the basic uh, yes yes no uh, data data analysis techniques because most people yeah. do not know what is mean what is median what is mode because you are coming from biology so people mm-hmm. coming from biology usually doesn't know statistical terms so they have forgotten what they have read in their mathematics back back then so uh, she will try to introduce you to uh, the next lecture is on centrality and type of data okay that what are the various types of data basic types of data and she is going to okay. go for basic uh, statistics one lecture every month and uh, okay. we'll try to cover we'll try to cover as much in statistics as possible over the year and okay. probably some day we will reach the modeling and uh, other things okay sir yes okay yes okay thank you Have a good Thank day. Thank you sir. Have a nice day. Thank you sir. Bye sir.